Okay guys, good evening. So this week, 5.15-ish, I'm gonna run through uh, body part training. Now, the reason I'm doing it into separate body parts is to try and get all the information across uh, in a way that I don't have to rush through uh, and put a bunch of exercises together. It's not necessarily the only way to train. Uh, I'm a big advocate of what I call higher frequency training, which might mean training one, two or three body parts on the same workout in the gym, especially more applicable if you have only have uh, the time to go to the gym two, three times a week. Some people train like this as an individual body parts their whole training career um, and there's, there's different nuances to it in the sense of there's, there's sometimes it's better for certain goals, but most of the time you can adjust the training to fit your schedule. So I'm going to do it as separate body parts across the week and then into next week, bring out another training plan that hopefully has got the, um, the information in and set out in such a way that it could be that you do weights five days a week, it could be that you do weights three days a week, even down to two days a week, um, and how to look at splitting that up. The common thing is, when you're training either at home or at the gym, the exercises don't really change, it's just that sometimes some of the, the positioning, the format of how you put that together. And everything we go through now, there's even more variations. I'm just going to go through kind of the main things and the main kind of training points to do exercises really well and safely. And then it builds from there. Individual people need slightly different variations of exercises. That comes down to what we talked about before with the squats and with the press ups. It's to do with the, the strength you've got right now, uh, what you're working towards, your limb length. And in this case, we're training, we're looking at upper body. So uh, how stable your upper back is when we're pressing with the chest, how long your arms are, uh, all sorts of different variations. Probably the first thing to point out is that resistance training is as equally as applicable for men as it is for women. Now generally, in comparatively to each part of the body, ladies are usually stronger in the lower body and they're comparatively weaker in their upper body, whereas men might have more of a kind of even balance in terms of that's in terms of comparison of gender to gender and across uh, the same gender in the gym so generally guys will press more in the shoulders uh, pull down more that sort of thing uh, and with the chest with heavier weights uh, comparative to the lower body as in they can work both areas fairly heavy whereas ladies will work the upper body potentially lighter and in terms of the weight they pick up uh, and the lower body I've, had, I've got girls that I train, ladies that be watching now even, that uh, are as strong as, if not stronger than the men in the lower body. So, you know, don't want to start naming names or shame any guys out there, but that, that's how it is. Um, so, what it comes down to, as, as it all does, is the relative intensity that you're working at uh, compared to where you started from and moving forward. And we'll talk more about that in the Q&A at six o'clock. Um, and basically what we're, that's called in terms of weight training is generally called progressive overload. It's looking at adding intensity progression over time. Now that intensity might come from uh, physically doing more weight, doing more reps, or it might come from changing the technique with the weight that you're using and doing slower reps, doing pause reps, um, doing isometric holds. All things are put into some of the weight workouts that we've been doing and in, into the other workouts as well. We're slowing things down, and that's probably particularly applicable now where you might have some weights at home, but you're not gonna have a rack and you're not gonna have a stack necessarily, you're not gonna have much choice. So for all the weights workouts we've been doing, I've basically got two sets of dumbbells, which I know that is more for some people, and I've got two set up with five kilos on, and two set up with 10 kilos on, and that genuinely the workouts we've been doing has been challenging enough because of using different techniques. So let's get into the chest training particularly. Chest training is generally pushing away from the body. Now I've stood up now and that could look like in the gym sat in a machine pushing away and for those of you guys on here that train at the flats there's two different chest press machines. Then there's the things like the Smith machine and the bench rack stuff like that where you still you're lying down now and you're pressing away. Then we've got things like adjustable benches so we can change the angle. So in terms of the angles you can work at, there's flat, is probably the most commonly seen people using, 
on a bench, then you've got incline, as in coming up in degrees, and the higher you come up, the more that transfers to kind of the upper part of the chest, which is the pec major and the pec minor. Pec major is works when you're flat and just above flat, uh, more so, and then the pec minor, which comes across the top of the chest and actually is the muscle that is responsible for the fly movement, as in bringing the, the arm across the body in the fly movement, and the pec minor does that. It gets worked as well when you're pressing just more directly across the body. And then the, actually there is the decline, which is where your hips and knees potentially will be higher than your, your chest, so you're further down. Now that's actually the strongest position. If you think that that's more pushing away from the body, you can see how that could be stronger. You come to flat, still fairly strong, up to incline, it's more coming to up to the angle where eventually you get to vertical and working the shoulders. Now that's generally, well, it's pretty much always going to be weaker. You see people who are going to bench press a certain weight and it's probably going to come down by 30, 40, 50% for a straight up vertical press. So that's the different variations there. Now, as we're focusing on working at home with dumbbells specifically, you might have a bar, that's cool. Some of this stuff will apply to that as well. Then we're going to have to modify what we're doing. I've got a bench out here. Uh, which is from our table. I've used that uh, with different workouts I've been doing, and that's that's cool. But not everyone's got that. So working on the floor and using what else you've got probably in, in your house is going to work as well. The floor press, and we've used this in some of the weights workouts we've done on a Tuesday evening at 6 p.m. is as as effective. All we're taking away is the very bottom stretch of the movement. So. That bottom stretch there, there is some use in it, but actually what we're doing is we're stopping that bottom stretch. So we're taking away the elastic potential, the elastic movement of the exercise, which actually means that we can, with a little stop, pause, we're actually working that a little bit harder, as long as we keep things engaged. So actually we're not losing anything by working on the floor, we might actually be gaining a little bit more of uh, the chest activation, the muscular activation, to work the chest really well by working on the floor. So it's a win-win. You, you think you haven't got the kit, it actually doesn't matter too much. Now the next bit is probably one of the most common mistakes in a sense, and that's not to say there isn't applications for um, the position of the dumbbells being quite high up and basically under the chin. There's a variation called the guillotine press, which is quite useful but most people actually need to reevaluate and shift where they're pressing dumbbells and it goes back to the same technique I was talking through with press ups in that if we look from the back with a fixed bar a lot of people end up up here actually that needs to come down slightly into that sort of position now that actually means they might lose a bit of leverage and actually maybe have to go back down the weight which is hard for some people to take. With dumbbells, we can naturally get to that position that a little bit easier. The elbows need to come down, and now we've got that angle up to basically the, you know, the bottom of the neck, with that shallow V shape. And that's the same as the press up. We want that with the dumbbells as well. The next thing we need to look at with dumbbells is actually want to drop the little fingers down a touch. So rather than being completely flat, coming down there. So it's in, and if it's a press, we want to come from out to in. So Elbows comfortably wide to elbows coming together. So they're going out and coming together. Let's demo that on the floor. Add the band out, do some warm stretches, but definitely working hard this morning, then we'll be okay. So hopefully not gonna to be too far back over here. Let's just move this up a touch. <clears throat> so hopefully you can see in comparison to my body. I'm actually just going to tuck the elbows down slightly, keep an angle into the dumbbells, and come up so that I am looking at the top of a point of an A. So imagine that it's a capital A, and I'm looking at the top of the point. So I'm drawing the lines up for an A. So this is known as the A press, or the chest A press. And we're just doing it off the floor. So if I'm relaxing the head back, everything supported, floor press up to there. 
go. Similarly, with the flies, we actually want the elbows to just drop below the line of the chest. Now, that, the reason for that is the pec minor is very closely linked across the clavicles, the collarbones, to the deltoids. So if we actually want to work the chest, we actually need to bring the elbows down slightly and come across the chest. Right. If we're up here, which often happens when you're lying on the bench, dumbbells naturally drift back a touch. And actually then, we're working more with the front deltoids, which is why a lot of programs that trainers will write don't include much front deltoid work because they're getting worked hard in the press, they're getting worked hard in the flies. So, that is your two basic movements, so I'm not showing the flies, I'll come on to those. Then we can work in some variations even though we're working at home. Obviously bottle today. Anyway, so, I'm going to disturb the cat a little bit. She's just here. You might see, no, it's alright. I'm going to move the camera around just a touch. So you can see a tiny bit more of a sofa there. Hopefully that's not disturbed. That's going to hopefully to the right angle. Let's just check. Yep. Hey Craig. Hey Zoe. Hey Joe. Ellen. Yeah, that's it. Good stuff. Right. So I'm going to use the edge of the sofa to support my upper back and bring my hips out and create a little incline position. Now, obviously that's not perfect, but as long as you're nice and stable, we'll be able to work it from there. So I'd recommend getting the dumbbells either side of your legs, getting in position first. So you can see there, I've got quite a nice incline position. Feet flat on the floor, so I'm not going to slide away. If you've got a wooden floor like me, you'll probably be alright on the carpet. Or if you're setting this up outside, you'll probably be alright on concrete or something like that. Then we're going to bring the dumbbells up. The dumbbells still want to go vertical. So my elbows are just off and press it up and together. Now, this is quite a high incline, which if you are past your mid-30s, into your 40s like I am, it's not a bad thing because changes in hormones, testosterone starting to lower in the body does mean that the previously muscular chest might actually start to look like it's dropping into man boobs, the, the, the classic late 30s, 40s dad bod. So if we can change the angle of the exercise and bring that up, that's great. <clears throat> so another variation I talked about was the uh, decline. We can do that by going on the floor. So some of you guys that have trained with me for a while would have used this movement, maybe even in a Smith machine, in Super 6, just having that variation where you're in a floor press and then you add in a glute bridge. So now I change the angle and I'm pushing away from the body that bit more. That is glute bridge, A press or floor press. Pretty good as a pet. Hello, Hey, buddy. What are you doing? You've been out the normal. Good shot. <laughs> so that's another variation there. Flies. Come down. Flies are generally best done uh, on a slight incline, so the sofas may be too high an incline, or, uh, or flat. Just got to remember keeping those down. Other thing we can add in is the bands. Now, if you're not working with too much weight, you can bob the bands around first, and then go to a floor press by holding the dumbbell. So we're doubling the resistance in the sense, or doubling the potential resistance. Uh, what was the last one I wanted to show? Oh yeah, another variation that we can then involve more of the core and the glutes particularly is to go back onto where you can get your back supported. And then, come up into a glute bridge and once again we're pressing in. So we've done the most body weight last. I'm getting a nice contraction into my boobs that I can nicely feel because I'm up. <clears throat> so, last thing to talk about and then we'll go through is probably rep ranges for uh, chest. Now, there's, in the, there's not really a right rep range or a wrong rep range. 
research now shows that really anything above three reps, I, I see right outside the classic one rep, two rep, so two rep max, the powerlifting territory is going to have an effect of uh, potentially muscle growth and potential uh, change in the body. Now, all training is a stimulus on the body and what we're aiming for with the chest is to stimulate the muscles in the chest. Now that might be that we are looking for uh, guys particularly uh, looking better in the chest area. Ladies, it's part of your workouts where you're just working the whole body um, and it's an area to work so you are getting a good calorie turnover as in during the workout and in recovery. So the rep range doesn't matter too much. There's going to be potentially diminishing returns after about 15. The reason diminishing returns is that uh, to go that high in terms of reps, your form might start to drop, <clears throat> especially when you do something like a hip bridge or a glute bridge. They're great tools to use, but if the kind of tightness in the core goes, tightness in the glute goes, then you're losing that side of it, and you may as well do the exercise in a more stable floor position or bench position, rather than forcing it in a sense of through the um, through some reps that aren't as good. Now, because you're working at home and you might be working with a limited range of resistance, you might have to add the bands, you might have to add um, some other techniques. So that might be just slowing the reps down, or it might be combining exercises. And in that sense, we can then also add press ups to fully maximize the work. It's all about intensity. Um, muscles don't respond to the weight. It's not like, oh, I need to be pressing 25s because last week I was doing 22.5s. So we need to step it up and they, it, the body doesn't know. It doesn't even know that you're doing a chest press machine or a Smith machine or a bench or dumbbell press. It just feels what you're doing. It's, it, it, it's getting the stimulus from what you're doing. So you might need to therefore stack some exercises together to get that same feeling when you're working out at home. So in the same way as I said with the, the body weight program and the band pro, like doing the band walkthrough last week, you might do uh, band press ups, then to normal press ups, get the band back, do some floor bands and then some floor flies to get a really good effect on the chest, you might need to do the same with this. So that's what we're going to go through now and bearing in mind that the this set we're going to do, uh, the decline position is the strongest position. So we're going to start with the weakest movement as in the fly movement, then we're going to move around to the floor press, then we're going to go to the glute bridge press. Now, if your dumbbells are quite light, so say the weights workouts on a Tuesday, you're going to work nice and slow. And we're going to aim somewhere between 10 to 12 reps. That's about right for the weight I've got. So you might need to go up to 15 on the flies. But all the, when you're stacking exercises together, always bear in mind that there's something else coming afterwards. So don't want to max, 100% max out the flies. You want to work when you're stacking exercises up to a tricep or a giant set with one or two reps left in the tank. So that's just like saving one or two reps. So let's see how this goes. Uh, we're going to put together then the flies, a floor press flat, and then come up to a glute bridge for this particular set. All right. So well, I'm going to lie fully on the mat this time. It's more comfortable. Flies again. We're doing dumbbells. We want to have the dumbbells above the shoulders. They don't need to come over. They don't need to be jinking together. Slightly down from the shoulders, as in where my elbows and my wrists are, is now lower than where my shoulders are. And I'm coming out, a little pause, and back up. So we're going to go for 12 of these. If you're working through, just nice and controlled 12. that bit to the top, so let them come together, good, now I'm going to twist these round now, I've got to the top of 12, into a floor press, nice and steady,
10, there will be two more. Don't forget to keep breathing. Generally out with the effort. Okay, now I'm going to take myself up to a glute bridge and keep pushing. That's a nice stimulus now. important to say as well often talk about you'll know, hear talk about or written in magazines or on a website or on a blog the mind muscle connection and it seems a slightly mystical thing sometimes of what that is and why are uh, physique athletes bodybuilders uh, people talking about the mind muscle connection and you get that right and you're gonna get ex so much so many more results it's not a secretive thing in a sense it is just as you are training focus on the muscle you are using or muscle you're targeting doing the work and automatically that gets your neuroreceptors in your brain to tell those muscles to work that's all it is it's not a deep mystical complicated thing so for this one as you're working through three exercises with your chest then focus on the chest working and you know hopefully working at home you haven't got a dog licking your face or something like that sometimes have. so uh, that, that's a big help. So what we're going to do now is add the band. So I'm going to add the band, but your resistance option might be the band. So you can actually do those moves we just done with the bands. So if you're working with dumbbells now, I'd recommend you do the same set. If you're working with bands, we're going to change it slightly. In that, we're going to do the flies last, because with the band, they're quite easy. So we're going to do the flies at the end. So what we're going to do is a floor press flat, then we're going to do the glute bridge press, and then we're going to do the flies at the end. If you're working with dumbbells, you can actually add the band in now and keep on using the dumbbells. Do the same set, flies, presses, glute bridge presses. If you're working just with bands now, we're going to have a crack with just the bands in three different positions. Now, I'm going to get down, go to keep that in position. So remember, if you're working with dumbbells, flies, floor presses, glute bridge presses. If you're now working with bands, we're going to do a floor press, up and in together, A press, the same as though you were working with the dumbbells, but we're going to put the flies at the end this time. Here we go. Yep. Nice and controlled, try to keep knees above your elbows, equal tension, exactly the same thing, little squeeze and pause at the top. The advantage of bands, you get more squeeze at the end of the movement. Let's keep breathing. Twelve, that's my twelve. You'll squeeze up and keep pressing away. Just adjusted the band. core if you lifted up. So I'm going to come back down. I'm actually going to keep my hands out because it just helps me to focus on bringing those together. Lost that touch and reset. Make sure that's round my shoulders, round my arm and go back into the flies. There we go. Now the most of the resistance in the band fly is going to come right at the top. You get a good squeeze at the top. Keep losing this one. There we go. So actually keep my hands from thumb to thumb, you can actually control the angle of the bands better around my arms. There we go. Right, we've lost count now. Let's call it eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Good stuff. Okay, so two different ways of basically achieving the same thing. We've not even put any inclines in. Now, if we put inclines in, I generally do those first because that is the weaker direction. So we want to have the most uh, capacity, energy in our muscles before we start. So maybe 
full workout like this we'll start with an uh, incline option just doing some presses you can get an incline option with putting your feet up or something to do your press ups as well and then into that set we've just done flies floor presses glute bridge presses at the end of that set if you're feeling like that's not working very hard go into some press ups foot and or knees as well that's going to take you through it's all about stimulus it's all about stimulus so how would i work the chest in terms of just body weight i'd be using some press ups and uh, once that's coming towards a failure i'd maybe hold a plank and squeeze in at the top for 8 10 15 seconds and then drop to the knees and do some more it might be that right now your level is doing knee press ups and then stand up and do wall press ups that's actually absolutely fine so this series is about building resistance a resistance program using all the tools that you might have that's why i started off with the body weight because everyone's got their own body weight then i've moved on now to the um then we did the bands last week so i know people are getting hold of bands they've only got bands wanting now to utilize them and now the last kind of extra element is some people have got weights at home so what i want is not you not to feel like oh, i need to get this and i need to get that to be able to do a workout the purpose of starting at the other end was wanting to realize you can do a great workout without any equipment and that's you know that's what the mw fitness online workouts are about in the morning as well which is why i've brought in the variations to do weights workouts do the banded lower body workouts but i wanted to make the whole thing as accessible to every, everyone uh, with having just a little bit of space and inclination to crack on and do some training the last thing i'm just going to mention and i'll bring this up again on the q a is how much do you do per body part um, and what i notice a lot when i'm in the gym is that people will focus on the muscles they want to look good the muscles they're good at training and uh, yeah that'll almost dictate what they're doing and how many variations they know for that body part so for instance you know monday classically it's chest day for guys uh particularly you know is that the memes that go around but pictures go around saying monday international chest day all that sort of thing it doesn't have to be you can train any body part on any day i've got a, i've got a theory that i've seen guys that are single and going out on the weekend clearly not at the moment should train chest and arms on a friday because actually research shows that ladies look for chest and arms in a man if it's a kind of in a bar restaurant situation so that's by the by in terms of body part how many sets to do in terms of working sets as in sets that are going to cause stimulus and are intense enough to be pushing for change in the body you need between nine and 12 working sets per body part per week so actually if you think about it if you did a couple of warm-up sets then we're talking about three exercises of three sets of a high enough intensity is going to have potentially have a good enough stimulus if we then say actually do it we'll make sure and we'll make sure we've done 12 sets in a week this is not in a workout this is in a week on that particular body part then we've definitely covered it so it might be in the gym that you do uh, incline presses something flat press variation uh, some flies and some dips that is the chest really worked and in four different directions so yeah i'm going to come to more of that as we go through the week but that could do it that's just an example there what we've done today we've got uh we've stacked up just a tricep there if we did that through that good intensity maybe having some press ups as well three to four times that's it we've done and that might only take 12 to 15 minutes the number of sets once you go past a certain point, you get a diminishing return. And we love, people enjoy training, so you might want to spend longer doing it. That's fine, but don't, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to spend longer. A 15, 20 minute focused, intense workout on a body part is going to be enough. So it's about kind of uncoupling the desire, the, the thought process of that more is always better to actually we can break it down. And I've done training methods before with different coaches where literally we've done three exercises, two exercises, one exercise on a body part in a workout. And I've done that workout. So five, six, seven, eight exercises once a week and got some phenomenal strength and 
muscular gains from that and it was just down to the intensity it was stupid intensity um, and actually the guy who does that is still a coach still someone I see on Instagram um, he's kind of modified it a bit now because he realised that for the majority of people going through that kind of intensity workout 40 minutes where literally uh, a lot of people that he trained were physically being sick and being ill it wasn't for the general population it was for the time when that wasn't his actual career uh, it was a hobby and uh, yeah it was great it was intense it built your mind as much as it did your body um, but it's not it's clearly it's not for everyone and um, but what I'm trying to say with that is there's a method to kind of fit every single uh, every single circumstance in terms of the amount of training you can do and when people love training and want to train five or six days a week um, yeah a body part split or variation of that is a really good way of doing it because it gets you into the gym four or five times a week five six times a week even and you know you've got a clear defined structure which is another aspect of it so I'm not going to say that anything's right or wrong I'm just going to give as much information as I can to you guys this week and into the plan so so you can formulate what's right for you cool so I'm going to jump off this now and upload it and then 10 minutes time we'll come on to the Q&A we're going to talk a little bit about uh, training uh, any questions from this fire them in or put them on the comments of this video and then we're going to talk about just some other things that uh, have come up with the weekly check-in questions I've had this week and just kind of answer them in general terms so that uh, everyone's getting the information thanks guys